Welcome back. My name is Zane, and uh, today we'll be reviewing scale. And I've been watching a video on scale, I've been doing some research on scale, and it's a fascinating cryptocurrency. It's fascinating for the blockchain and it's fascinating for Ethereum and what it means to create a decentralized application and what it means to have multiple nodes and what it means to be as secure with your nodes as much as possible. And I just really find it re really fascinating. And I really wanted to wanted to talk about this project because on the surface of looking at this project, you really don't understand what it's trying to achieve from gaming, energy, data, IoT, exchanges, all can be can be operated in a much more functional way on on scale. And hence the name scale, it's it's supposed to it's supposed to be a hint, I'm guessing, at just how scalable every cryptocurrency ex um, project can be. But unfortunately, many cryptocurrency exchanges are not very scalable. So this is where scale comes in, right? So it's it, it can be explained very simple. What is scale token and how does it work? And it's more than just a token. But a scale token is a hybrid use token, which represents the right to work in the network as a validator, stake as a delegator, or access a share of its resource by developing and renting an elastic sidechain or an elastic blockchain for a period of time as a developer. So if you're a developer, this is exciting news for you in particular. So it serves as a built-in instrument of transfer for uh, facilitating um, four main functions. And we're gonna talk about those four main functions. One is security, that's a start. And security is a big thing in the world of cryptocurrency. The other thing that's a big thing in the world of cryptocurrency, obviously, is payments. And another thing is rewards, and obviously, the last but not least, voting and governance, or governance and voting. We're gonna talk about all of this, guys. So let's start with security. Security of staking in the network. Um, scale token holders delegate or stake their um, scale tokens to validate who runs nodes that make the scale network function by validating blocks, executing smart contracts, and securing the network. They're rewarded with which with the tokens actually because of the scale in um of the scale in system, how it works when it comes to staking. I mean that's usually how staking works anyway. So what's my point? My point is in order to run nodes to make the scale network function by validating blocks, executing smart contracts and securing the network well, all, all all of those um all all of those um stake tokens being handed over by those delegators are safe in the in the scale blockchain, and this is what they really wanna want you to understand. They reward with scale token for their efforts, of course. Thank you very much. Now the payments for the scale chain subscription fee, developers purchase their subscription access to the Elastic blockchain said you can I guess you can call it the S chain it's actually got its name right there S chain using the scale tokens quite simple actually simplistic I like it so rewards rewards a big thing everyone wants to know about rewards if I'm going to state my token I want to know how much reward can I get and this brings us back to here all those delegators state their token how much reward can they get how good is scale when it comes to rewarding those individual who've taken the risk to state their tokens. I mean, that's a big thing. That's a big thing. It's usually very safe in a liquidity pool. And scale is obviously is obviously trying to be as scalable as can be. They're trying to revolutionize what it means to be a scalable plug project. So rewards very important. So rewards for validators and delegators staking their tokens. Rewards are accumulated monthly. Based on fees paid by the developer for the chains and a monthly inflation of tokens into the network, governance and voting, scale tokens will be used for on-chain voting, which will control all economy parameters of the scale networks. Ad additionally, information surrounding the governance and the nodes and stalt can be found here. So there's actually a link for more information on the governance and, and voting, and I'll 
I recommend you to check out this because governance in any token or any cryptocurrency project is extremely important as we all know. Governance is extremely important and the more nodes that cryptocurrency have is the more secure it can be because there, there's less point of entry, there's less point of attack. It needs more validation in order to make a decision for the project to go forward. That's key. That's key. There are some cryptocurrencies out there where you need 95% of the votes from the community in order to develop the cryptocurrency further. And that's a good thing. That is a really good thing. So let's talk about scale and their node foundations. So the network of decentralized economy, nodes foundation based in based in um Leinsteinstein. Um I think that's that's a German word, probably um somewhere in Germany, obviously. And I'm I'm pretty sure I did not pronounce it properly. Liechtenstein, that's probably it. Liechtenstein has been created to carry out a mission of supporting the scale network. Now, the scale network is designed to support businesses, people, organization that run on an open internet, right? And that's key, an open internet, free to be used, not being watched all the time, your privacy is secure. All that stuff is very important when it comes to a cryptocurrency project. So the foundation will support the network by electing a diverse set of set of network representative comprised of a DApp developer who runs a scale chain, validators who run scale nodes, independents such as investors that help kickstart the network economy, and developers uh, slash representative, developers slash representative guys, that actively built, maintain, and evolve the code base. Now, these representative will serve the community through uh, function, um, facilitation of uh, on-chain voting, grants and budget, treasury decision, the representatives will select it by the foundation initially. However, future elections will be held via a variant of on-chain voting by token holders who select a representative that um, facilitate on-chain voting. So to ensure the longevity of the foundation, it has been allocated 10% of the total pool of scale tokens that's in over a seven years period to provide it with a budget and resource to fulfill its mission. And that, in summary, is the node foundation of scale. And I just love how simple and simplistic they've made this. I also love this font. I'm not going to lie. I love this one. And I love this one as well. Seriously, I love those fonts. Uh, the path forward for scale labs. They also talk about that. We can have a quick discussion on that. So scale lab has handed over IP assets and fund raised via initial uh, SAFs to the foundation. Our scale is uh, contracted via a service contract with a node and start to provide a code contribution to the open source um, representative, uh, marketing support, uh, community building support, uh, solution en engineering, and other network positive community contributions. Scale will be regularly contributing to and will help maintain the scale network as well as uh, fostering and supporting the community. This role does not include control of the governance. It's important to, to know to know their scale. They make it very clear. Their role in the scale project, it does not um, include control of the governance. The governance is left to the individual who are staking, the individual who are contributing to the network. So Scale Lab, just like any other entity, is an outside supporter of the network. Good to know. So the Scale Lab um, contract will be overseen and managed by the foundation network representatives to ensure decentralization. That's good. I love decentralization, and this is exactly what Scale is focusing on. A decentralization app, a platform that you can develop dApps, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I like. That's what I like to hear. When I'm doing my research, my eyes lit up when I see this word decentralization, fully decentralized. And the community goals and vision are always made top priority. Fantastic. I couldn't I couldn't be happier to, he, to hear these things, you know. And um, based on the research that I've done, it looks like security and decentralization is at their forefront of their mission and their and their um and their project, their thoughts, their imagination, the structure, you know, the scale network validators, you know, it being decentralized. Is, is one of the biggest things. And they talk about it again right here when it comes to validators. Scale is an Ethereum compatible network with a leader 
leaderless consensus designed to run an uncapped net um, number of independent nodes. Number of independent nodes. Independent nodes is key right there. Each of which will be providing resources to multiple high performance decentralized elastic blockchain. Decentralized elastic blockchain, guys. This is great. So the scale protocol optimized allocation of resource of each node across the entire network of elastic blockchain. Great. And validators rewards are distributed evenly across the network of nodes. Validators maximize rewards based on meet and performances targets. Not to mention, Scale is a POS network that utilize a work token. A work token. Node setup and staking is simple and it takes only a few steps. And you can become a validator immediately if you hold enough token and if you're if you got your mind set on it now I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice but it would be pretty crap of me if I didn't help you guys in figuring out what this token is you know and not to mention we're not even halfway through our research <laughs> well I'm not halfway through my research but um, I think I've explained to you guys what it is. Now I'm going to tell you guys where it's available. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not giving you advice to buy anything. This is for entertainment and education. Scale plus Geminin. So Geminin is an exchange, mostly based in America. And of course, I think they're in the UK as well. I haven't downloaded their app. I haven't really checked. I mostly use Coinbase, but they're available on Gemini. That's great because Gemini is actually a great... Um, exchange created by the Winklevoss twins, the guys who had Facebook stolen from them. Long story short, <laughs> I'm just joking, guys. And and let's not forget, Scale begins trading on Coinbase as well. And this has actually been for some time. Um, when I say sometimes, I mean a matter of a couple of weeks. In the world of cryptocurrency, that is some time. <laughs> <laughs> that is some time guys it's available on coinbase pro and the regular coinbase site as well so i just want to let you guys know where you can you can you, you can you, you can find scale just in case you're interested now scale decentralization storage isn't that important as well when it comes to what their mission is i'm just going to read you a quick paragraph just to sum up what it is so if you've been um Keeping up with scale, you're aware of the high throughput elastic sidechain that frees developers from the constraints of the Ethereum mainnet. While computations and um, throughputs are cool, today we're very excited to be releasing scale storage to the community. And let me just let you guys know, this was in May 2019. This is some time ago, guys. So today they're very excited to be releasing um, scale storage to the community in this article. They're basically going to be covering the scale file storage and how it works. I just want to let you guys know that so you can check this out if you're interested. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to get into it because um, the most important part of this video is what scale is. And, I've, and I think I've covered most of that. But I'll leave this for you guys in the description just in case you want to check it out. Great. So... Decentralization, powered by AWS. AWS is actually a Amazon company. Um, it's their web, um, Amazon Web Service. is probably the biggest web service company that does what they do in the world. And Amazon makes a huge amount of money from AWS. And that's the thing. That's the funny thing about, uh, about Amazon is that you look at Amazon stock price. They're not even. I think Amazon will easily double. Um, in the in the next decade when it comes to stock price because of the service that they provide they are a gigantic corporation that provide a number of services not to mention their streamers their streaming service you know so it's it, it's it's a lot but enough of that so what is aws for you guys that don't know it's a subsidiary of amazon providing subsidiary means basically a secondary company that owns that is owned by Amazon, right? So it's a um, cloud computing platform for APIs to individual companies and governance. And let me let you guys know some of the biggest companies use this service. 
the, 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 it's insane just how big AWS is. If you guys don't believe me, do a quick YouTube video on what AWS is, what is AWS, and it will amaze you just how big they are in the market and what they do. When it comes to cloud platform for APIs, I mean, every website needs an AWS. Every website needs a service like AWS. And AWS just happens to be owned by one of the biggest companies in the world. And let me let you know, wow. So why am I bringing this up? Well, decentralized out, decentralization powered by AWS scale, right? So hidden risk of running nodes in the clouds. This is what they want to get you to understand. And again, I will leave this in the description because I do believe in doing your own research. And you guys got to, got to research into this because I can't teach you everything. I can teach you the basics, but it's really important for you to understand a little bit of this, I'd say. You know, so decentralized networks running in the cloud, right? The reason why um, specifically say new decentralized network um, economy sense to run nodes for POW blockchains in the clouds. However, with these new decentralized um, networks using um, using like DPoS, where certain nodes are appointed and, and guaranteed payouts on a regular basis, it becomes more realistic to turn a profit running a node in the cloud. And who's the biggest cloud provider in the, in the world? AWS. <laughs> AWS. I skipped a lot of unnecessary crap in this I just wanted to get straight to the point so but keeping the nodes in the clouds come at a great cost this is important to what scale is so without the proper hardware to secure cryptocurrency keys with multiple other platforms running in the same environment nodes are vulnerable to a number of attacks which cloud comprise its operation as well as any private information stored on it and that's not all so the most unappreciated crypto security vulnerability today is validators running POS nodes on AWS and, and storing crypto keys in clear. Jeff Bezos and many, many AWS developers have access to all these keys. Billions of US dollars can be wiped out any moment unless this does not change now. And this is the point, guys. Scale has recognized this problem. They've, they've seen a problem. They've seen the problem before it occurs. And this was actually an article from 2019. They've seen the problem before it occurs. And every day it keeps on getting a little bit worse because everyone thinks, yeah, let's just store everything on the cloud. It's just easier. It's so much easier. But of course, it comes at a cost because Amazon is a very centralized company. And them having this much information, well, that can't end well. Now, can it? <laughs> Guys, wow. Wow. I guarantee you, the majority of you, well, I won't say the majority. I'd say 50% of you did not know this. You're probably just learning this right now. You're probably just learning this right now, which means that I probably taught you something new today. So because of that, let's just all take a minute to realize that we can always learn something new every day. It's fascinating. So to my surprise, the majority of the comments were from individuals speaking out against practices and asserting that many of them, and I'm reading this right here, were running their own nodes. <laughs> so you think a lot of crypto um, organizations are running their own nodes? Think again, and would never run in the cloud environment. Again, think again, guys, which is a relief for me to hear, but I'm quite sure that this practice is still rampant in the community and these individuals will never admit it publicly. Of course they wouldn't, but cloud computing and cloud and cloud operation is really efficient, it's really cheap, it's really easy, and it's a really sets your mind, it sets your, your business at peace of mind. However, it comes at a risk of security. So so that's what they say. So I'm going to expand on some of the um, liberties which they um, many have not considered when setting up their nodes in the cloud. Right. So the liabilities, guys. So first, uh, preface that this sort of information is mainly for individuals who are um, accruing a lot of uh, values on on their nodes, mainly applicable to protocols whereby the majority of the network rewards. Um, occurs by a small set of individuals, EOS, Tezos, and Cosmos, to name a few. 
So if you're a small node and running in the cloud, you will likely be less exposed to the risk of someone attempting to hack you or steal your funds. Multi-tenancy. So when you spin up on an AWS instance, you're running on the same server as many, many others. While the engineers at Amazon have certainly done a lot of um, certainly done a lot over the years to mitigate the ability of programs on one part of the server from being able to uh, deduct information from another part of the server, it's not bulletproof, it's not foolproof, and it's not impossible. It certainly isn't. So just last year, um, and last year from this article was 2018, which isn't too long ago if you think about it, two major security vulnerabilities, um, Spectre and Meltdown were revealed as exposed, allowing um, processes running within the same machine to learn private information relating to other processes. Spectre did this through the utilization of uh, special processors, which, uh, um, which left the machine vulnerable to having sensitive data read or read, um, while Meltdown allows rogue processors to, or processes to read all memories, even when not authorized to do so. So, um, so and the meltdown attack is um, undetectable. That's important to know. This meltdown attack, undetectable. So only the developers would be able to take a keen look and good developers as well to know that there is a problem going on because some of these attacks, you will never know that it's happening until it's far too late, far too late. You know, so so AWS terms include a clause covering possible zombie apocalypse in the event of a widespread vi viral infection. Coincidentally, that's what we're going through right now in 2021. Since 2020, actually since 2019, December and November, Corona has been has been around, and our governments around the world just completely ignored it in 2019 in November and December. They completely ignored it. They ignored it because. They said it wasn't their problem. It was China problem. That's what they said. And that was so wrong. Because look where we are now. We could have helped China. And they didn't. We didn't. And now look what's happened. So that causes human corpse to um to renovate and seek to consume living human flesh, blood, brain, or nerve tissues. Apparently this is a term in the Amazon AWS agreement. I don't know for sure. You have to check it out. So take this with a grain of salt. You know, this this could be forged. So look into this yourself if you want to confirm it, but maybe this is just an inside joke, obviously. Or maybe it has an interesting meaning behind it, because obviously we do have a pandemic on our hands right now. So, well, make up for that what you will. So I'm going to save this article as well. I'm going to leave this article in the description for you guys to check out yourself. So let's get into a more interesting thing about scale network price. You know, it's 60, um, it's 60 cents, 60 cents, you know, and uh, with, a, with a max supply of uh, 7 billion, total supply of 4 billion, it's currently circulating supply 660 million. That's a good circulating supply, you know, but that's actually 9% of its total max supply that it will ever be. So make of that what you will once again. Now it's all time high is just over the dollar. That's his all time high. That's a good all time high as well. But let's not forget it was once at 0 0.07 cents. And this is and um based on what based on research I've done on um on scale, I think this would be a very prosperous decentralized project. You know, so scale is built on an um innovative ERC. 777 token standard with support delegation on the token level. So ERC 777 is fully backwards compatible with ERC 20, which means that it supports by all participants of the Ethereum ecosystem with ERC 20 support. One of the important functions of the scale token is scale network is its ability to contribute to a network security via um, delegation and staking. Unlike with ERC 20, with the ERC triple uh, seven, a delegator no longer needs to send a token to the delegation smart contracts, but instead share with the staking provider the secure delegation key while storing the token in the cloud or hot wallet of their choice. 
Now you see that if you don't understand that, then you won't understand just how just how awesome it is to be a delegator for scale. You won't understand. But once you read it, you realize, holy crap, that's actually pretty article. That's, that's actually pretty awesome because delegators no longer need to send their token to the delegation smart contracts, but instead share with the staking provider the secure delegation key while storing the token in the cloud. I'm not a fan of the cloud or a hot wallet of their choice. You know, I'm not a fan of hot wallets either. You know, I like a cold wallet offline, dead. There's no, there's no point of entry unless you broke into my house and stole my, stole my key, my phrases, or you stole my, my hard drive, you know, <laughs> that's, that's that. So we've already talked about the node foundation. We've talked about it a little bit, but we've been through most of, um, of what scale token is. And it's been really wonderful. They also have a, have a white paper, obviously 27 pages. And I recommend you guys read in every single one. If you intend on investing or you intend on getting involved in delegation, read it, understand it, get people to help you understand it. And of course, if you guys want me to, I will do a review on the, on the white paper alone, nothing else, just the white paper. I'll do a video on that if you guys are interested. But you can also do your own research, and I always recommend to do your own research because you can't go wrong when doing your own research, right? To finish off this video, let's talk about an execution layer on the Ethereum. Blockchain technology incredible constraint and limitation around computation and storage uh, capabilities have stimmed use case creation and subsequently significant user adoption. Here we talk through the development life cycle for a decentralized application and the trials and tribulations faced by their developers. And trust me, there's a lot of tribulations faced by developers. Seriously, like being a developer, it ain't easy. I used to code myself. It ain't easy, guys. I code in Swift. I code in HTML, CSS and JavaScript a little bit, just a little bit. And it's not easy. But if you get real good at it, it's a, it's a prosperous um, skill to have, you know? But they go into this a lot more. Why scale? They talk about it a lot, developing your decentralized application. If you guys are interested in that, I recommend you checking it out. But for the most part, I do think scale will be a very prosperous um, coin. Let's take a quick look at the market cap. I don't want you guys to think I just ran past it. I mostly talk about supply and price. And what the token is, is it decentralized? And once it's decentralized, and it's a fascinating idea, it's a great idea, it's doing great things, I my answer to one introduction is usually yes. What is my answer with scale? It's still yes. I do believe this token will 100x. Maybe not in 2021, because that would be extremely difficult in 2021 to 100x. However, in the next five to 10 years, yes, this could 100x. And if you think about that, that means anything that's invested will have a 100% return. And that's what I'm talking about. That's, 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 that's what I'm talking about, guys. So 402 million, that's a market cap based on supply and the people who have bought the circulating tokens. That's the market supply. And I think this will 100X. So a lot of people do call me crazy because I think a lot of these tokens will 100X. Here's what I can tell you. This token will definitely, definitely 25X. It will guarantee 25X. 100X is something that I believe, but it may not, it may not happen. You know, what if we all get struck by a, what if the world gets struck by a, a asteroid tomorrow? Then it definitely won't happen. The network will be destroyed, including our entire planet. However, the satellites might stay up for the next few, few years, but then the satellites need maintenance and then after a while they all go down. So the internet will cease to exist. So nothing's impossible. However, I do believe guarantee 25x and most likely 100x. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video about scale. It's been really interesting. I've learned a lot to say the least, you know. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Subscribe, leave a like, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.